Hello Lighthouse, good evening, Elder Alina here. Um, when you get on here, just make sure you like, comment, share, do all of that before we get started, um, and even during if you'd like, but I want you to get on and comment so I can see um, who's on tonight, and I can't wait to just fellowship with you and talk about a few different topics tonight. Um, if you don't know who I am, again, my name is Elder Alina, and I am the director of the Young Adult Ministry here at Lighthouse called Ignite Young Adults alongside Pastor Adam. And so I was asked to speak tonight and I was trying to figure out, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? What is it that, you know, we can bring to light maybe that hasn't been brought to light recently? And he was showing me through different things the last couple of months that I've seen um, just over the internet, internally, externally, and just seeing um, so many people being saved, so many souls coming back to Christ and so many people um, realizing who Jesus is in their life. And it's been so powerful to see that. But what I've also seen on the flip side is many people who were on fire for God when the church doors were open and were out there and were just laying hands on people. And I've seen the opposite happen where instead of being even more on fire, they've become lukewarm. And I just want to talk about tonight what it is uh, to be lukewarm and what it means to be on fire for God. And we're going to pull from the story of Jonah tonight. So if you want to open up your books to Jonah, uh, we can always, um, we, we can start there. So you can follow along with me. Um, so what, as, if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my iPad. So I'm just looking at my notes. Um, I think sometimes that a lot of us, including myself, we look at the Bible and we're like, there's no way that, you know, the, the people in this Bible, all these amazing people that have been talked about, have done anything bad, like have made a mistake, have ever disobeyed God. And I know I thought that growing up. Um, thank God for Anley, Anley plug. Um, I now know different. But uh, I, I thought there's no way that they could ever exhibit lukewarm behaviors in the Bible. I mean, they had Jesus right there, not not the whole um, history of the Bible. But, you know, when he was there, how could anybody be lukewarm? So it amazed me, um, you know, as I was looking back at the story of Jonah, that Jonah himself was lukewarm just for a minute there. He was he was lukewarm just for, just for a second. Um, so I want to talk about Jonah and like... Jonah, what? You know, out of all people. But yes, Jonah. Um, so if you want to open up your Bibles, wherever you are, um, hopefully you have one on you. If not on your phone, just open it up real quick. Open it if you need to. Um, but let's look at Jonah 1, 1 through 17. And I'm going to jump ahead. I'm not going to read all 17 chapters, so don't freak out on me. Um, but I'm going to jump and skip a few. But I want to kind of get, I want to read this together. And I want to read to you what jumped out at me when I was reading this. In Jonah 1, 1 through 17, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to the city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come, come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tar Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for the for that port. After paying the fare, he went abroad and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. And sailed, I'm sorry. Now I want you to just keep that in mind. It says, after paying the fare. Okay, we're going to come back to that. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up, call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us and that we will not perish. I'm going to jump down. I'm going to skip seven and eight. Verse 9, he answered, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them. They asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away. 
So the sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down for us? He says, Jonah says, pick me up and throw me into the sea. He replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. We're going to jump down to 17, final, final verse. Now the Lord, now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the, of, of the fish for three days and three nights. Isn't it crazy how faces change, but stories don't? And the stories of life just com continue to repeat themselves? What I mean by that is that back then, lukewarm actions bared large consequences. When Jonah, Jonah knew that he was in the wrong, for disobeying God after God said, go to Nineveh. He said, man, oh, I'm not feeling that. Like, mm, I'm not ready. I'm not sure. Whatever his excuse may have been, he thought he knew best and disobeyed God and went to Tarshish. But when he got, he paid. He paid to get on that ship knowing he was wrong. Sometimes we put ourselves in, in predicaments that we feel like, you know what? We're too far ahead. We're, we're too, I mean, we're too far gone. We're too far into it. There's no going back. I've made a mistake and there's no fixing it. So I'm just going to keep moving forward. And you end up paying to go further into what you already know is wrong. Some people, we, we put money in it. We put time into it. Whatever it may be, we are willing to sacrifice our own sanity, for lack of a better word, just to keep going into what we know is wrong because we fear going back, whether it's asking for forgiveness or saying, you know what, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And I knew I shouldn't have. And instead of seeking forgiveness, he was afraid and ran. So Jonah's act of disobedience didn't just affect him, but it affected the people around him. The sailors knew that whatever Jonah did before they, they even had a relationship with him could possibly kill them in the process of Jonah's rebellion. They didn't know him from Adam. They didn't know him. He came on, he found the port, he got on the boat. So they didn't, what he did in his past affected his present and could affect and could have affected their future. So our actions have consequences whether we realize they will or not or we're, or whether we are willing to pay them or not, it doesn't matter. They will happen and they affect others. It's a domino effect. Our actions and our words when not lined up with the word, have inevitable consequences that never just affect one person. It's never just one person that gets affected. And it's never, let's say if it was me, it didn't, it doesn't just affect me. And it didn't just affect Jonah. It affected everything around him, including the people that trusted him to get on their boat. There's always a domino effect to our actions, good or bad. It's our choice. Our heart's intentions may not have meant to even hurt those people, just like Jonah didn't really mean to, to cause any harm to them. Um, but Jonah, just like I'm sure Jonah didn't disobey God, you know, with the knowledge of potentially hurting those sailors even to death. But it's our heart's posture that is supposed to be one of obedience, beyond our discomfort or fear. What can cause some, what, what, what can cause someone to be lukewarm? What could it be? I mean, the easy answer would be to say sin. Obviously sin itself, all forms of sin can cause us to be lukewarm. But even as Christians, sometimes we don't intentionally mean to sin or get ourselves in certain situations. However, when they do occur, are we willing to acknowledge them and seek forgiveness, seek a learning opportunity and to be teachable? Or do we continue to live in that and allow those temptations to pull us further, further and deeper into sin, causing us to be lukewarm and forgetting what it means to be on fire for God? But what does it mean exactly? So it means that 
if what you are doing and the way that you are living doesn't represent the life of Jesus, you are some lukewarm coffee. So what I mean by that is, I don't know about you, but I definitely do not like lukewarm coffee. I don't like lukewarm tea or pizza, soup. I am a, it's got to be hot or nothing unless it's meant to be cold. We don't do no lukewarm stuff. So I like things fresh and hot, especially when it comes to coffee. So, but I bring that up because in Revelations 3.16, the Lord says to the church of Sardis, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. What? I mean, Lord, that phrase alone is like kind of violent. Like he will spit us out of his mouth when we are lukewarm, when we choose to be lukewarm warm when we've made mistakes and instead of seeking forgiveness we pushed ourselves further into believing that we are not worthy of redemption or worthy of of making things right with the lord and we've allowed the enemy to come in and distract us with different thoughts different things that maybe from our past that we knew or felt like we couldn't go back from but the devil knows how to get into our minds but this is why you know you have to guard your heart guard your mind and constantly be in prayer but the scripture itself about spitting out of his mouth is more to remind us that we are not our own we are not our own and we must be ready and obedient to be all that God has required us to be as his children to whom much is given much is required Sin separates us from being all that we have been purposed for. Sin causes us to fall into temptation, go back to our old habits, become cold towards other souls. Sin causes us to be disobedient or to be negative, unwilling to serve or sacrifice. And it causes us to be unwilling to surrender to Jesus due to fear of changing into someone we don't recognize. But that is a good thing to be transformed, to have a renewing of your mind, to be made whole, to be made white as snow is the most beautiful thing and the most wonderful thing to say that I changed for the better. But the devil comes in and confuses us and say, oh no, you can't change. You can't be no holy roller. You can't do all that God is requiring of you. That's just too much. You can't live a life of holiness. You've done too much. You've gone too far. But that's not how the grace of God works. The grace of God says, I forgive you no matter what. I will love you no matter what. That God's love doesn't have conditions. It is unconditional. Just as much as our own parents on this earth, whether they're in your life or not, their love is meant to be unconditional. And the Father's love is so unconditional that there's not even, there's not anything on this planet that you could even think of right now that would ever make him love you any less or ever make him not uh, just shower you with love and grace and mercy. So now that we know what, what can separate us, sin, disobedience, what does being on fire mean? So to be on fire for God means nothing, nothing else matters to you than being with the Lord and pleasing the Father. And being on fire for Christ means that you walk by faith. Being on fire for Christ means that you kill your flesh daily. That you take that time every morning or every night, during the day, whatever you have to do, and say, God, I am not surrendering to my flesh. I surrender to you, Lord. Being on fire means that you view your family, your friends, strangers, all people as souls, as children of God. They may be family, they may be blood, but they are souls. And every soul is worth saving. Your friend may have been involved in your life for 20-something years or five years or two months, but they are a soul. Strangers on the street, they are a soul. We as people of God, as Christians, as believers, are meant to look at people as a soul, as a child of God. Not the person that cut you off on the highway. Not the person that didn't agree with you that one day. Not that one person that hurt your feelings 10 years ago. But you don't look at them in that light. You look at them in the light of they are a soul that needs saving. They are a soul that belongs to God. And if we look at them that way, 
we won't, we'll, we'll begin to have a much thicker skin and a much softer heart. So, and being on fire means that you desire to be like Christ. To be like Christ is to walk like him, talk like him, pray for his people, cover his people, love on people, love without judgment, love without conditions. That's being like Christ. 1 John 2, 15 through 16 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride in possessions, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Don't put, our lo don't put your love and your effort into the things of the world. The way we start working our way out of lukewarm behavior is through love. Love is transformative. Love is like those weight loss pills. I don't know if anybody else has like been on a weight loss journey, but I'm putting my hand up first. Um, but those weight loss pills, a lot of them are meant to curb your appetite, right? Well, it's supposed to help, you know, redirect your food habits. Well, the true love of Jesus is what curbs your appetite for the things of the world and away from ungodly habits. Just like weight loss pills removes like toxins from your body, love clears out the toxins in your soul to make room for healthy replacements. There's a little analogy for you. What better way to replace toxic, lukewarm behaviors with some fruit? Just like if you were like on an eating you know, if you were changing your eating lifestyle, you got to put more fruit in there, put more veggies. Well, what better way even in the spirit to replace some of those bad behaviors with, or lukewarm behaviors with fruit, fruit of the spirit. Um, uh, Galatians 5, 20 th 22 through 24 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such there is no law and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires so let's take a quick look back what can cause us to become lukewarm easiest answer sin even the tiniest of mount even the tiniest bit of walking backwards a half a step backwards of going back to the wrong habits going out partying stepping out for a night to grab a drink with a friend or whatever it may be going with a friend and, and getting caught in a situation where there's things around that maybe you weren't prepared to deal with and you're trying to get better it doesn't matter what it is maybe you did a little white lie maybe you looked at something you weren't supposed to maybe there are things that have messed with your spirit and your mind in the past and you've pushed through that but even the tiniest step backwards can open up doors and that can only lead into kind of like, a, um, you know, those tumbleweeds that, got, that get bigger and bigger as they roll. It can increase and expand and cause it harder to get yourself out of it and kind of go back up um, where, you, where you were. So even the tiniest step backwards can cause things to get confused for you and cause things to um, just make things a, a bigger struggle. In, in short and just know that even when we do make mistakes whatever it may be there is grace there is mercy and there is love and forgiveness at the cross in the presence of God things can change for the better and I know that sometimes it may seem hard but when I tell you when God says he's in control he's in control no matter what what it looks like or what it feels like he's in control of it so, but well, from what I learned from the story of Jonah is that it wasn't just sin, it was disobedience. It was fear. Those were the big ones that I saw that caused this lukewarm behavior. That fear caused him to be disobedient. So how can we come on fi become on fire for Christ? So it's all about redirecting our heart's posture to be obedient to his word and to accept his true unconditional love for us. So 1 Peter 4 and 8 says, And above all things, have fervent love for one another. 
for love will cover a multitude of sins. Let's ask God tonight what areas, let's ask him tonight together, what areas have I been lukewarm in God? What areas um, do, do I need to take a check on, you know, just check in on? And then we need to ask God, ignite a fire in those areas once more or even for the first time so i want to go ahead and pray together as we close out and i want to thank you everybody for joining us but let's go ahead and pray together just to close out this time of god and just you know seeking him um tonight before we close father god i just thank you lord for every heart and every soul that watched tonight god I pray that whatever message they got out of this, Father, whatever revelation, whatever understanding, or even just encouragement that they got out of this, Lord, God, that it takes them to the next level in their spiritual walk with you, Father. God, I ask you, Lord, that right now, God, as we come to you with a heart of repentance, God, we ask you, Father, to remove anything that's within us that is not meant to be there, Father, that is not of you. God, we ask you, Father, for forgiveness, Lord, forgiveness for things that we know and the things we don't know, things that we've done and things that, Father, you know that down the line we may encounter again but God we thank you Lord that your grace is sufficient and God that your mercy is made new every new every morning and so Father I thank you Lord that every heart and every soul that's watching tonight God that you give them strength through temptation that you, God that you give them strength through the hard times God that you give them strength Father God through those moments that they are not sure what direction to go God I ask you Father for a wisdom Father from heaven God a holy and a heavenly wisdom God, that comes straight from you. Lord, that as, as Father, we encounter these things, God, these roadblocks are different things that the enemy tries to put before us, that God, that you give us wisdom to push past it, that God, you give us wisdom to see beyond the struggle, to see beyond the temptation, to see beyond our circumstance. And so God, I thank you, Father, for every opportunity, Father, that you are going to make for us for an, an escape for what the enemy tries to bring us through. So God, I thank you, Lord, for just your presence presence, for your anointing. God, I ask you, Father, that God, just um, just as Father Jonah learned his lesson, God, I ask you, Lord, to teach us, Father God. Let us be teachable, Lord. God, show us, speak to us. God, I thank you, Lord, that God, in every situation, that God, you are there. And so, Father, I ask you tonight that God, you just give peace to every heart and soul that is struggling and that is going through things, Father, that, may, that they may feel that they're alone on. But God, that you give them the understanding and the comfort of knowing that you are there and that God, you will put bring them through and push them through, Father, and lift them up. And I thank you, Lord, that God, that there is nothing that you cannot do. And God, I thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, and God, for your fruit of the Spirit, that God, that it teaches us to walk just as you as that you have walked and to talk the way you talked. And God, I thank you, Lord, that we continue to pray in fervent prayer. And God, I thank you, Lord, that God, we love fervently. And God, we just thank you that tonight, that there just be a transformative time with you, even in their own homes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us joining me. Um, and I hope you have a good rest of your night. God bless you. Make sure that you like, comment, and share. And don't forget to check out the announcements on the Lighthouse Church Facebook page for everything that we have coming up. Oh, and just a little plug. Um, I'm going to be ordained on September 6th as a pastor at Lighthouse. And I'm so excited. So I would love for you guys to be there if you can. Um, five o'clock, September 6th. So <laughs> look forward to seeing you guys there. God bless you. Love you all. Can't wait to see you guys. Bye-bye.